Welcome to Perceptions Today podcast, where we discuss consciousness in all forms. June 2022, episode 30, Eileen Meyer joins us in Roundtable about Kundalini and Life, part 2 or 3. Eileen Meyer is a mystic, poet, songstress, author with experiences in Kundalini, lucid dreaming, OBEs, Mayan wisdom, 5-MEO DMT, and much more. Participants knew it was being recorded. I'm saying that it's up to us to engage with this within so that we don't have to have the, the harder lessons in the external reality. So you you've already got those such markers. an epiphany, really imagine someone is making you talk. That's what, what I want to believe. But you just said it. You've just helped me. I know exactly what to do. And perhaps you're not even aware of it, but damn, I really needed this. Thank you so much. You're very welcome. And yes, it, it, it's, it's not something other than me. It's, it's, we're all blending um, all these aspects of ourselves that we had rejected because they were not welcome here in this reality. So it's up to us to say, I welcome these, these pieces of me. I have a song called pieces of me. Um, it's, it's, reintegrating this is what the unification is it begins with us and reunifying all these fragments of us right so i i'm very excited um ifer about your path and and you returning and reaccessing that potentiality within all it takes is your attention it's good to have you back again i have to say i'm hopefully when to get this right is it avi esther it is yes Hi, Abby. Hi. I can't, I can't help like to, but to beam, like I've got, (laughs) got such a big smile on my face. I'm like, yes, this, this, just this. Oh, it's so wonderful. I just love bathing in the resonance of like vibrational souls like you and like a lot of people in this room <laughs> so yeah cool. we're, we're coming together now that's for sure that's for sure i know avi from clubhouse um okay that makes a- sense now that uh, some woman comes and purrs at you because i was getting very confused <laughs> <laughs> we'll get used to it it's the new world right yeah <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it's lovely. I wish I had that effect on women. Okay, wait a minute. Say hello to me again. Sorry, you actually are talking to me then. I looked away at another <laughs> screen to check where my co-host disappeared. Also. <laughs> By the way, hello, my name's Paul, your host. Oh, hi, Paul. <laughs> Excellent. You do realise that's going to be the first hook on the podcast. And that will just get everyone listening. Yeah, that was, that'll pull him in, right? <laughs> yes, I knew I could get this working tonight. I knew it. Wild eyes. Excellent. Oh, it's all coming together. It's all coming together. Oh my God. Oh my goodness. I'm so excited. I'm always so excited when I'm, when I'm in resonance and I've just been sitting, oh, just feeling, feeling more than, than listening, to be honest, because there's a, a, a thousand reflections of my own stories and all, all everything that's been shared from everyone. And ah, it's like, you know, those moments and, and, and I'm, I'm doing my best to, to look because this Twitter thing is new to me. I haven't been on Twitter since like 2018. <laughs> so it's, it's a bit of a new technology for me, but I'm just wondering if, if there are other people in this room that, can feel that sort of expansion of self when you move into that space of communion with people who are in like resonance. And, and there's almost like this. (sighs) Oh, I feel you. This one I felt, I'm sorry. I didn't put my hand up, but I just have to make this room. If If you're going to praise the room, that's fine. I don't mind that. Oh, go on. You, you were about to praise. <laughs> no, continue, Ava. I don't mind that. It's just when people start asking questions. No, I, praise I, is good. I, just exactly. bring the praise on for the rest of the community. <laughs> Serious, Paul. What she's trying to say is exactly what I want to point out, is I'm 
all emotion. There is this, I don't know, there's this energy in the space. I cannot explain. I just stood up, you know, walking back and forth. It's this positive energy. Knowing that I'm at the right place. Oh, my God. Thank you. Uh, Afi or Afi, Esther. Thank you. I feel you. It's just going to be my my way to respond to everybody in resonance, okay? I'm going to purr at you. (laughs) I can't actually remember what I was saying. I'm just so happy to be here, and I just had to say hello. (laughs) Hello, and I'm so happy you're here, Avi. And I see uh, Divya is here as well. And perhaps some others came, migrated over from Clubhouse. Thanks for being here. So did anyone else have anything to um, share or ask? I'm, I'm, I'm playing host all of a sudden, Paul. I hope that's okay. Oh, no, that's fine. Okay. I'm just going to tell you that I found out my co-host had a phone call come through. So she will come back, she says. Ah, okay, good. Because I was wondering where she disappeared to. Ab- it's Ifer. about five seconds and Ifer. out of my brain it goes out Ifa, right yeah uh, i just want to ask about dreams is it um how come we're dreaming less or when we are dreaming you know lately i i'm dreaming less or when i'm dreaming it's very intense is it something external or internal it's always the dialogue to me it's always the dialogue so um, it's just another way to dialogue with the, uh, these uh, other aspects of self, higher self, soul. Um, and it goes through, I have noticed in my life, it just kind of goes through cycles. And um, there are times when it's just kind of background music, right? Um, like I'll wake up and go, wow, I have a lot of dreams. But nothing surfaces, right? It's like nothing just comes up and says, you need to remember this, right? Those are the dreams that I journal in. in. I, I always write those down because they will let me know there's something here for you. Investigate this, explore this, right? Um, but I encourage, I always encourage everyone to engage with your dreams. That is one of the best things you can do to open the dialogue. Uh, Just with, a good one. On obviously the eighth of February, I if I didn't know, but we've got Krista de Mayo is going to be talking about lucid dreaming as well and how that all works and interconnects. So we've got a lot of events coming up, which you might want to have a look in the bio of this Twitter account in the link yeah, tree. Wonderful. They're all listed in order. I will. I will definitely. Yeah, lucid uh, dreaming and lucid dreaming. It's it's all um, it, it it's all a self discovery uh, process once again um, we get to understand uh, more about uh, who we are so that when we understand ourselves <clears throat> we can understand uh, uh, the more of what is available to us I was just um, which brings me to something that I found uh, this morning when I was looking through some of the transmissions um, I want to say that if if you, if you want to read more about, uh, I always point people to my book, but also my blog at koyoparising.com, um, K-O-Y-O-P-A rising.com, I have written a ton about these transmissions and what, quote, they are wanting to say to us, to remind us, and to empower us at this time. But in this 2013 um, translation, they... They say we are referring to us, you know, definitely quotation mark us, if you will. Although we are far more than us, we are a we, we are an I, based on how you interpret frequency, based on how you interpret yourself. This is how you will decide who we are, who the I am is. So everything is interpreted. We begin to remember how to do this frequency interpretation and language um, so that we can um, be universal citizens again or cosmic citizens because 
we need to reorient back to the natural state and our natural abilities. So it's evolution. But um, they tried to explain, um, you know, in, in, in my interpretation, that um, it isn't that, um, you know, we're going to uh, evolve and, and, and rise out of this, um, you know, this stupid state of being human, which I always, this irritates me when I hear people talk about I this. I apologize for butting in, but this is just going to send shivers up Mike's spine. What you've spoken about is very similar to a poem that he's put and had read up on his Instagram talking about the many rather than the one and it is if he's got the chance to talk once i think it was abby first then afer but it really just links into the kind of sentiment that you've just been reading out beautiful if he's beautiful. available i'll have to yeah. contact him while i type okay okay um so i'll let you choose which one i think it was abby first then afer okay um, uh, yes, of course. Go ahead, Avi. Um, thank you. So, uh, I, I really, I really loved the sort of speaking into the the dream time and the encouragement of of working with your dreams. I'm. I think the thing that fascinates me most about uh, you and and the collective around you, uh, growing. Um, is this shared space of experience, you know, the, this sort of coming out of the solitude of being odd, <laughs> you know? Yes, so well said. Thank you. Yeah. And, and, and you know, it, it, I think I know maybe two other people who had experiences waking up, levitating off their beds as, as children. And to be able, I mean, you don't say that to people that just makes you crazy right but then there's this growing amount of people who are like what you had that too oh my god I had that so exactly you know, it's it's like oh god that's so wonderful um and uh so within this sort of space of of dreaming um I'm just chatting do you want me to go upstairs Okay, sorry, that's my my thirteen year old. <laughs> um, so within within this sort of dis discussion of dreaming, I'm I'm wondering if you or anybody else in the room who works with their dreams has ever experienced or is able to discern the difference between a dialogue between you and your self, different parts of self, and when other beings enter your dream and you have various dreams whether it's somebody who's just passed or i call them incoming dreams souls that are incoming into earth to experience being human um so yeah, that that's sort of my 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 curiosity before we move beyond that sort of conversation about dreaming uh sure um great question yes the answer is yes and the more attention that i give to the dialogue and to the dreams and i value every single dream right well i'm not rejecting what looks like oh that's a silly you know i used to call them pizza dreams right i ate pizza before i went to bed that's a pizza dream um but every single dream um it is uh is a, is a jewel is a treasure um and there, I have my documentation um, starts back in the 80s with my dreams. And I can watch the evolution even of the dreams and, and the conversation. So, yes, Avi, um, this is where I dialogue with the beings as well. This is where uh, contact would first start. This is where it would shift into out of body and then full on um, what people call abduction. Um, and so it's all, but, but it all started in the dream state, right? This is where contact um, for me was, was always initiated, was in, the, in those realms. And then it would start to move into other realms, um, which we are just, we cannot even speak authoritatively about these realms. Um, we are simply remembering and exploring these realms again. And then, of course, 
I have had conversations with my mother who passed. I've, I've had conversations with um, several people who have passed away from the physical reality. This is, it, it, this is where we speak to each other um, outside of all the rules that exist here in this suppressed way of being. Um, and so it's, it's an amazing, amazing way for us to, um, to, to reconnect with the field, you know, with uh, each other, with more. So very, um, very good point, Avi. Um, Eifert, did you have something? Yeah, you talked about, thank you, by the way, um, you talked about being your true self. Um, can you imagine that I feel like I have a split personality I for the mother, I for the teacher, I for the bookkeeper, I for the the father because I'm a single mother, I for this, I for that, that mm -hmm. I have lost touch with the real true oneself, which I think is the reason why I stopped having contact with my mother who passed away. And she used to visit me in my dreams because I miss her a lot and um, it would just, you know, lift me up, like wake up with a lot of energy because I was hugged and kissed by my mom and, you know, that fetus position you take, like I'm the youngest of the five, but I don't know, how do I find the true Eifer? How do you, how do you find that post motherhood? That's where I am right now. Mm -hmm. Good question. And we did touch upon this earlier. Uh, you have markers within you for who that is. Uh, at least the, the reminders of who that is. And this is, this is what you're return, returning to. It is um, bringing your attention back into what that felt like in your body. Um. This is uh, what they taught me was the dialogue where it's like you show up in any given moment. You just start talking and we start and this brings you back into resonance um, in your own unique way. Right. You're going to have your own journey. But I've been practicing this for about 15 years now since the time they delivered it to me. And it has been. Uh, extraordinary. It has been an extraordinary journey. First of all, to know that I can turn inward and I can start the dialogue and say, hey, all you do is you speak what's actual and what you're feeling. Hey, I'm feeling disconnected. I'm remembering a time in my past when I felt more connected. I choose to feel that again. And so I'm here and I'm present. I will continue to show up and be present in this way because, you know, essentially you're saying you mean business. This is how you show up on the radar, radar of the universe, the cosmos, the field, when you are being real and you are being honest. And then more data will I'm, come to you. I'm so sorry. I, become, I just became quite emotional. It makes so much sense. Thank you. You're welcome. And, and I just, I, I, I want to empower you, Eifer, because the way that I'm reading you now, reading your energy, is um, you're, you're not as far away from this as, as you're thinking. See, that's the thinking mind. You're, you're really? actually... Really? Yes, you're so close to this. It's a feeling. It's in your body. It's light. Return to it and engage with it. And you will find evidence almost immediately. The dreams will come. Everything will come together to say, oh, my God, you're back. Thanks for coming back. We've been here all along. <laughs> They're, your guides, Thank you so your, much. the Thank cosmos you so are much. always present. It's us that wanders away. And don't judge the self. Again, do not judge yourself for wandering away. Simply correct it and come back to the present. 
Hope that helps. Wow. Life. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to shut up and give everyone else a chance to talk. And Paul, you're amazing. Thank you for this space. Imagine like, you were, like, I started following you. Thank you so much. I'm going to just, you know, weep in silence of happiness. Thank you. I That's oh, okay. We, you can always come back, stay where you are, and you can always ask more questions once the questions kind of change over. If Mike's actually got the ability to come in and talk, because I had my hand up for Mike, you see, because I thought he wasn't going to come back in or not. Well, I've got to see if he's there. I'm just going to type on the other screen <laughs> in a different piece of software. And if not... Yeah, I just. Oh, he's there. Excellent. Yeah, I just, uh, I just uh, re-requested it. Um, did you want me to to read a bit from the uh, the climbing time story, Paul? Was that was that it? It was the section where it was being multiple that the information was being communicated to. Um, Sure. us as human entities yeah. i think that's the best way that i can kind of condense sure. everything I'll, I'll into small bits very... because it kind of matched in yeah. because i heard obviously yours on instagram recently and i've just put it up into the shared space the actual story oh, the so you can one. find oh, it there right. right okay i'm sorry the, the purest rain i was looking at another one. Oh, okay but you've got that information to kind of interlinked to imaginal because she was getting information down that everything was multiple and not the singular right i'll read something I'm very trying to briefly boil down things down into small from something bite-sized bits from someplace else i could i'll just say very briefly i started this is from another story in the same book i started to have dreams no one ever met them or saw saw them these were non-human intelligences they sent Tele telepathic messages from far beyond our solar system. The messages came like wind over the earth. Sometimes they arrived as music, sometimes in dreams, images of oceans pouring over the earth, their blue waters spilling and crashing, whales, sharks, schools of colorful fish, rivers, rivers like waters, rivers, their waters like a runaway train drowning the mine, Ma millions of suns on fire. It turns out that the universe is made of music. Its secrets are trapped in the melodies of ocean water and the rushing of waterfalls. I'll stop there. Beautiful. Yes, very much resonate with that, Mike. Thank you. And I'll send you another one, too. Just and you, We can share things back and forth. Uh, that, would, that would be great. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. I'd love that. Imaginal. I'd love Thank that. You. Thank you. Thank you. And I'm what sure Imagine was coming to your talk on the 25th. Yeah, Everybody come to, to the Zoom. There is a Zoom yes. link. You must go register and everybody come on the 25th. I registered and I did not receive the email. email. I've checked. You are registered according to that. I've been talking to you. Don't come stamping your feet here. <laughs> I tried to look up for everyone. <laughs> I am lodging an official complaint. <laughs> I'll drive around to your house. I'll bring you to the room. I'll get you into a nice comfy chair. It will be fine. Oh, I love that extra special attention. Thank you. <laughs> so funny. Artesiana. Oh, yes. Thank you. Um, I, I do have a question for you. Um, and I, it was about, um, dreams. The, um, I, the, there's a difference between um, the awake dreams, I guess. But um, the, how can I say this? There was um, dreams where you're actually um, almost like you're astral projecting there during that specific time frame that... I mean, everything, it's like you're really there. You have the smells, the sights, the sounds, the um, um, everything. And as you come back from that dream time, that that dream was absolutely one of the prophetic dreams. Like, it absolutely positively comes true. So it's almost like mm, there's a couple different components going into that. Um, I guess the easy way to say is when my brother was in Vietnam when I was a child, um, I knew when something was happening, I would say duck or do this or he was injured and I would literally feel that 
drove my mother nuts. But um, can you kind of talk a little bit about that? Because there, I really believe that there's like two or three different things specifically going on with that. And I'm just trying to get a little feedback on that one. Thank you. Um, sh- sure, Artisan. I, I, um, I relate to how you um, described those kinds of dreams. I would say um, that in my experience, we are um, also, um, as we e- evolve, you know, with our dreams and, and if we're, we're actually paying attention and we're engaged with them, it will take us into um, even uh, more expansive um, types of experiences. And I believe that that has to do with um, all these lives we have and other times and spaces that, that we define within context of time and space. Um, they're not actually um, going on in time and space. Uh, they're all happening simultaneously. And so we can um, pop into these um, other times and places. You know, that's what we return with. That's, the, that's how we clothe the experience when we come back in. It's all pure essence. And then we come back and we wake up and we go, oh, I remember this and I remember that. And so then we're, we're using our orientation to this reality to clothe the essence of this interaction that we were having, um, these interactions, these experiences. Um, so those are, those are um, extraordinary experiences to have as well. It's, it's all so much fun um, in my viewpoint. It's, it's, uh, it's so exciting and fun <laughs> to to be able to have access to these realms through our dreams. The other evolution of dreaming that can happen is we can begin when we've um, when we've given our attention to our own stuck places and our own fears, and and we're engaged with um, transcending this, healing it, dissolving it. We can start to have um, dreams for the collective. So um, these are things that um, I, I don't like the word. I don't like the old words, you know, the descriptors of when uh, people try to put us in the box of psychic or precognition or this or that. Um, precognition and, and being psychic, it's like, are we being psychic within the box that we have been um, conditioned within? Or are we opening up and being um, remembering uh, the, the frequencies and the vibration of the cosmos and who we are and what we're connected to, and then translating that into our current, oh my God, I'm here on earth and I'm human and I'm having this experience, but I'd rather um, just do all the work that's necessary in the, and pay attention to my dreams and, and all of it so that I can open up more to streaming my greater self you know embodying my greater self to fully be here or be here as much as possible so that i can come together in rooms like perceptions today and i can speak the truth and i can say this out loud and then that's what starts the music here right so you see all these little these little buttons here popping off with with responses to this because there's a resonance that starts to grow and and this is where um this intelligence has shown me this is where it begins you and they they said years ago you just wait you just wait until you start talking with each other when it gets to that time and you start sharing with each other it's going to be oh amazing you know and then i they show me what it feels like in my body And just to click in on this one, to join it over, because we're also talking to scientific people as well, the bridge is being made. It's not just having two circles that aren't touching. They're now overlapping in a manner. And we've got people like that who want to do that. And that's one of the good things, like Anthony's wanting to do it and other people. That's what I think should also come across to people who haven't heard that from us before. 
Yes, very much so. In fact, I, I have extended myself in my world, my reality here where I live. A few years back, I was invited into a, a science scientists bridging with uh, the spiritual, with uh, theology. And we would meet um, and discuss things and try and find the bridge. And it was amazing. Um, it was frustrating at times for me, but um, this is part of my work. This is what I get excited about um, because I know that this is possible. I know that it's the human beings that are that have had these unique lives, whether it comes from the science background or it comes from the spiritual, you know, exploration um, or both. Uh, it, it's this is this is the bridging time where we can, um, you know, kind of fill in the blanks for each other, you know? Uh, that's what they've said a lot, too, that, that music fills, fills us in. It informs us. Frequency informs us on these layers and levels that cannot be articulated uh, or explained. And just to add to that, sorry, because, again, before you actually pass the music bit, Myron Dahl, who has agreed to be with us on the 18th on a Zoom meeting. Again, live event, come bring your questions and answers. He's had epilepsy since childhood after having a coma, and he's always constantly heard music, and he's a musician. So there are so many people, even another one of our community called the Tamara Dick, she has musical hallucinations in her ears, but it obviously isn't hallucinations, really. It is something that she's picking up. So there's all this communication coming through. And again, you've got Mike saying it within stories and with other places and other people. When Abby speaks and obviously Wild Eyes gets to it, they'll probably say the same kind of thing. And it's amazing how we're now getting to not just use one stream of understanding. We're trying to overlay many to become a tapestry to find the total answer. 100%, Paul. Yep. I, I, am, I am complete, as they say on Clubhouse. So my co-host doesn't like exist to... anymore. Yeah. Abby's next, then Wild Eyes. <laughs> I have to just be brief because I'm, I'm on a, a club. Oh, no. Run closer I, I, to the phone. I, I can't. I'm, I'm in the car. I'm picking up my son at that time of the evening for me. So I, I'll have to just rest what I wanted to say. I think she's obviously oh. having to concentrate on driving there. Wild okay, eyes. Avi, let us know if there's something that you, that you wanted to share. Um, just speak as loudly as you can because there's a lot of background noise. But it, just let us know when. And I guess we can move. And Wild Eyes is next. Hi, everybody. And hi, Eileen. I, hi, I Wild really... Eyes. How are you doing? <laughs> Fantastic. Thank you. Good. I, I've been listening. I came in late. I apologize. Um, I just want to. I just want to say I appreciate the sharing of all the nuances. It's not something common between as far as the psychic community for the most part. So it's really nice when you come across somebody that's willing to to share. So I appreciate that. Um, I have a question for you regarding the out-of-body experience. And you talked about time intervals and whatnot in different realms. Now, I've had experiences where I've actually been in our realm. And from what I gather, during several global events, and I pretty much figure it's, it was at real time. So is there a difference between that and experiences where, I mean, is there is there a difference from what you were talking about? Uh, I'm not clear um, on the exact question. Um, I don't, I, I would, but I'd like to address it just with pure energy response to the energy of what you just said we have a tendency i feel to to want to categorize things that don't necessarily need to be categorized do you know what i mean your your gifts are your gifts and um however they emerge and however you feel comfortable and and how you orient to it and how you continue to grow and orient with it right so that's that's important for us to encourage each other who who have been demonstrating and using their gifts that they are always evolving um we don't 
stay inside the construct and keep doing it the way that people ha- approaching it the way people expect us to approach it, right? We have to continue to break through within our own <clears throat> self and, and continue to evolve and grow so that we can um, bring more through and, and in different ways that can reach more people. <clears throat> but um, I personally have not had the, uh, I've had dreams where things have happened um, that happened in the dream. But it's not uh, not as much about events. I'm not. That isn't one of my my gifts. Uh, is to say, oh, there's going to be a plane crash, you know, on you know March 23rd. Um, that is not something, and I, I'm amazed by people that do that. But that's not something that I do. Um, okay, let me clarify it for just sure. a little bit. Okay. These, there's, this is not pre- precognition at all. This is where being out of the body, and I'm not really referencing in terms of um, uh, comparing to other types of out-of-body experience other than the time factor, because I will find myself at a point where it's at real time. It's as it is happening. It's not something I, where I said, I want to go there or I need to go there, or I'm told to go there, I end up there, and something happens. And then the next morning, or whatever, um, it's on the news. So I have to figure, I have to do the math in terms of, of time, the difference in, you know, the time in, in the different locations. But each time I do that, it puts me at, at a time where I was there at real time, the event happening. And when you mentioned before about different time intervals, you know, with, with realms and how time, you know, is measured, it's not measured or it is measured in terms of whatever realm you're in. I was just curious as to, is there a difference then, or is it just another, um, and and I don't want to say category in terms of, you know, going out of my body, but the idea of, how does how does real time event? I, I don't. You, you've never experienced that. Is is that correct? I'm just. I just want to be sure. Uh, no, I have, and I'm, I'm understanding oh, okay. your question better now. Yes. Okay. Sorry about that. If I confused. I'm confused myself. No, so. it's hard to articulate <laughs> this stuff. Um, oh, I was going to put in with two people which are connected. Again, to Anthony Peake as in Graham Nichols, who does out-of-body experiences, he actually had basically collapsed on stage in front of people. And then when he came to, was able to give complete information about a bombing that was going to happen on a particular street in London. And it was all verified and written down at the time. And that happened. Oh, that's right. I remember. Yeah, really. Wow. And also, again, Mike will know this, Mike Frito, that Myron Dahl, when he has his epileptic kind of seizure, when he's had it for like nine hours later, he's got like an overlay of somewhere else on top of his reality that he's in at this time. So he can be in different areas. And again, my viewpoint on time is that if you imagine an analog faced watch with the second hand clicking round, your consciousness is all at the middle but you could be flicking through different realities on that second hand as if not always being in the same yes. place at the same time popping in and out yes yeah you know, this is during dream state so that's the only way i can explain it it's not yeah. where i'm walking you know during the day kind of thing or going in through meditation i don't meditation i don't meditate that much if right. if at all to be honest mm-hmm. so this is just an automatic thing that happens mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. um I just spoke with someone recently about this very thing uh, she was sharing uh, from her past where she was dreaming and came out of the dream and said, wow, I just had to her husband, I just had this amazing dream about the, this bombing and this, and it was that, and I saw this and I saw that and she fell back asleep. And when she woke up, um, this had actually happened. Um, And I can't Mm -hmm. remember what the event was. So it sounds very similar to what, Mm -hmm. to what you're describing. I feel yeah. like it's not so much about time, but it's about 
uh, the level of potentiality. It's like this is 99% uh, going to happen, right? This is um, this is 42% uh, potentiality, and I think people have this gift of of just reading and and being able to read the level of potentiality for something. For some reason, you're brought into that. That's part of who you are and what you do. Uh, it's it's an aspect. I mean, it's it's one of your gifts, one of your many gifts. Um, so as far as breaking it down and articulating it uh, even further, as far as uh, trying to figure out how time works, I think what Paul was saying is very relevant here. It's like... Um, you know, frames on a, on a, on a film. It's like um, the way that it, it, uh, how many frames per second is it? 30? 24. Frame, 24 or 30 frames per 24. second. And so it's a, it's a, you know, what's happening in those in-between times. Um, this is, it, it, we could, we could go crazy with, with, you know, trying to define it in, in ways that, make sense to the world that we were born into or we can say huh this is interesting i'm very curious about this and dive further into it and explore it and then tell us more about it because that's well just to drive you crazy there's a scientific study that's found out that the decisions you make have been made by part of your brain which is not your conscious or subconscious seven seconds before your conscious mind actually decides to do it now that just destroys you when you think about if you've made those decisions how are you driving because it doesn't make sense then because if you've made those decisions behind and backwards and then you're going to follow seven seconds later with that kind of delay how are you making all these decisions to catch balls talk to people be in the right sequence with people it all gets a bit weird and wonderful at that point yeah well it's not like i you know i called up the you know a travel agency and said you know i'd like to go someplace special or different you know (laughs) just send Mm -hmm. me there it it was like no prior knowledge of any of it so that's why and yeah i am very curious pardon that's a cheap flight the cheap flight (laughs) i have extra i have a lot of frequent flyer uh, miles so trust me i'm (laughs) i'd like to use them (laughs) that'll never happen well thank you Sure. I, you know, I want to say that I'm not a good explainer. Um, I am very, I'm an expert on my own direct experiences and what I have learned through my own interactions with uh, the natural grid. But I, I cannot, I do not have knowledge or data or explanations um, in some areas that I, I just, uh, I, I have experienced it as well. But I couldn't even begin to define it in terms of, um, you know, a relatable way to define it. Uh, do you know what I mean? Yeah. So wild eyes. Are you happy with the answer? Because then we can go Absolutely. to Absolutely. Yeah. yeah I'm, I'm fine. They know that that was perfect. That was perfect. I understand a little bit more, though. Yeah. Thank you. That's okay. Ifa. Of course. Aoife. Thank you, Paul. That's okay. Let me put my hand down. Is that how I put my hand down? Um, about the music. Um, you guys talked about music. I, I, I just can't remember the whole context. But lately, I hear music. And it scares Sorry, the S H I T out of me. Do I go into that music? Because I wake up after a dream. I don't remember the dream, but I remember the song, the rhythm. I don't remember the words, but even when I'm awake, I can still hear the music in the it's it's a chanting. It's it's people saying, singing stuff. It's it's almost like it's um like Indian, um, how do you say that? Native American kind of chanting. It's scary. So you're going me. for the shamanic kind of chanting, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, 
what do I do with it? Do I go into it? Yeah, I'm curious why it frightens you. Because I know where it can lead to. I, Hmm. I remember it from my past as a child. And, um... Yes, I'm. I'm scared of losing touch with the reality that people find normal. Okay, bingo, excellent. This is the great place to land. This is the moment that we all will come to, and this is what this intelligence has referred to as the choosing time. Will, will you choose to remain with the quote normal world? the world you were given that is actually not real and not fully representative of who you are and how you were designed to be or no, no, w- no. Yeah. It's or only you... given me misery. Yeah. So um, fear. Yes. Go straight into it. But again, also some of those songs, dialogue. if they are the same, and again, I'm only using the knowledge that I got through natural born alchemist and other people like that. If they're called the Icaros, yeah, I C A R O S, some of those songs are used as medical healing because of the chants and the vibrations and everything else. Yeah. So yeah. you might be having something which oh is my God. is a it healing because experience. I'm Ill? Because I'm no, no. sick? It, it, is, it, is, is that the reason? Perhaps no, no, no. Why they can be used. It? it might be an intuitive knowledge that you're picking up like a radio dial frequency that. It just happens to be necessary for you to know, either to pass on to somebody else or to confirm with somebody else something. Yeah. I was just wondering if I'm the only one hearing it. It sounds so stupid. It sounds as if I'm crazy, and I know I'm not crazy. The moment I start hearing it, it's, for example, maybe the heater or maybe boiling water. And I listen, Kevin, and it's real. Paul, it's so real. And if I focus, if I would have the courage to focus more, I would perhaps even hear the words, sing aloud the words. But it's it's gibberish for me. It's it's a different language. Sometimes it's just the tone and the rhythm that is necessary, isn't it? Yeah. Imagine. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. I know and, that um... we've got to hear, and, and obviously. Uh, Greybeard's obviously first, and then, uh, yeah. but I think they got connections to what they're saying. Oh, look who's come back! Okay, it's our co-host. I I just want to point out really quickly the the things that I zero in on and what you're talking about when you share in this way. It's yeah, I know people will think I'm crazy. I know, uh, uh, so then you're deferring. You're, it's a deference back to the old structure, right? Just notice those things. You're not crazy. Thank it's, you. it's the courage to walk into the unknown and to engage with the unknown. That's the choice right now. So. I think you're going to get confirmation from the two people that are going to be talking next, I feel. Okay, I'm done. Just a quick word from our co-host. Hi, sorry. Maybe not a quick word. No, I'm talking. Um, you know, I just wanted to say sorry. I had to dash out. I received a, an important call that I had to take. That's okay. We're just checking your audio first that you didn't get stuck there and couldn't say anything. So, Greybeard, then next. Thanks, Paul. Uh, I had uh, several things I wanted to point out. Um, first, day for uh, something that just came up as I was listening to her, uh, what I found interesting with you know with the music and hearing things. Um, yeah, I read several books on Celtic, you know, Fey or Fairyland, you know, worlds and realms, and oftentimes, right before an experience, uh, the Celts would. Uh, say they they heard music but like otherworldly music of different languages or just the most beautiful music they've ever heard or just different than what they were used to uh but it was often always associated right before they experienced uh the fey in some way uh so i find that connection there interesting um and then paul uh the second thing i wanted to mention uh, you describing a seizure about the layers of dimensions or whatever that that's got to be one of the best descriptions i've ever heard i've never been able to fully explain what having the seizure is like as i suffer from them um but that's exactly what it feels like 
Uh, it, it, it's, I often describe it like um, if you ever look at um, like an image from a comic book or something that's supposed to be 3D and you need to put on those glasses that have the red and blue, if you remember those from back in the day, and you look at that image and it's kind of blurry because it's got the red or yellow or whatever. It's got the three different lines. That's what it feels like. Like, like it's a blend of multiple things at once and you, you have this feeling of there but not there. Like people talk to you. But and you, you feel can't... disjointed as well for those number of hours or however long that aura finishes for. It's yeah. like uh, people talk to you, but you're not, uh, you comprehend them, but you don't process. It's like you're not there. It's the weirdest feeling. But yeah, you described that to a T. That was great. Uh, but I did have a question for Wild Eyes going back to her dream. Um, my, my wife had uh, quite the experience as well like that. And I'm just curious if, if when, when you had that event dream, are you there yourself? Are you there as someone else or through someone else's eyes? Um, my wife has these, these, these very specific dreams as well. Uh, one in particular was a mudslide that happened. Uh, had, it was within the last decade, but she was someone else. But she was going through the mudslide as it was coming down and ravaging the village. She was digging people out. And um, I want to say it was a day or two later, it was on the news that this big mudslide happened somewhere in an island. And she can't even look at the images without bawling her eyes out. Um, it's too painful for her because she felt like she lived it. But I was curious if you, how yours was, if you were someone else or if you were there observing. I was there observing. I was there in the room. I could write that book. <laughs> Honestly. Yeah. She knew every detail, but she said her hands weren't her hands. She said, you know, she's like, I was someone else. I was there and I was trying to help all the people like I knew all them. Uh, so, so when she talks about it, I found that interesting. But but she, other than that, she describes it identical as, as you and as Anna Maginal do. Yeah. Um, you know, I, at one at one time only that I, I actually felt the person like the person was that in this dream or realm or wherever I was, um, I thought I was um, I was Asian. OK. And I and when I woke up the next morning, it was so real when I, I ran right to the mirror to make sure. I mean, that's how real it was. So I don't remember there wasn't much happening at the time, but I just remember I was like it, at one point, I think I was questioning, wait a minute, it, uh, who am I? Because this is I don't look like this. I, I saw an image of me. And then when I woke up, I was like, oh, God, I've sat. I just I sat there for like 10 minutes, like wondering what the heck just happened. So, no, but most of the global events, I'm there. Sometimes I'm hovering above. Sometimes I'm there on the ground. So I don't know what's worse. You know, it's like I, there's no engaging at that point. I don't think there's an awareness on their end that I'm there. Very much like a cinematographer kind of routine of feeling, it sounds like. Very okay. much. <laughs> this delay is good, isn't it? Always makes it fun. Okay, Artesian. Yes, thank you. Um, I, I'm sorry, I, I, I have to, I'd like to really bring this back for just a moment about um, sound drumming um, or hearing. Yeah, feel free, mm -hmm. feel free to bring it back. Okay, thank you. Um, I am Native American, and the one thing I can say is whether it be dream time or any other time, if this is something that you're hearing, it is a great honor to be able to hear it. In, a, in Native culture, sound is brought in that establishes the frequency for whatever it may be such as you, we would open to a specific rhythm, perhaps to give honor to the north or the trees or to give honor for healing or honor for harmony and balance. So if you hear this and you hear that resonance, we will always take the drum the sound after it's been after we've been playing and we always bring it down into mother earth because it vibrates back to mother earth that thus comes back to us so the reason why i'm saying this is that if you've if you have that ability this is a, another awakening for you it's that next step for you to step into whether it be your ancestors or anything to that it is a gift 
to be able to hear that. It's like there's people that listen and hear the um the sounds of the spheres, which is like some really mm, high level uh, octaves up there. So consider it an honor to be able to hear that because it's creating a resonance within you. And listen oh, to I'm it. sorry How for biting in on this one, Artisan, but you've just given me something. I've bumped into a person, and this will all fit in nicely, and I'll do it short. There is a woman investigating the hum with a capital H, and it's sounds that can't be heard by other people that go around the world, and it's cosmic or something along those lines, and she's investigating it. And it links in with some other people who, even if they're wearing earplugs or to remove decibels, their body's still picking up the hum, even when they're next to other people who don't do it. So they're a bit like a tuning fork. So I'm going to put that name in the shared section here. And also, just quick check with you. Isn't it correct that also when a native drum, say the wooden framework's cracked, once it obviously has a repair work done on it, it has a ceremony to bring it back in a prayer, et cetera, for the, the actual skin of it and then the new skin that goes on, if I've got that right? Yeah, it de- yes, it would depend basically on um, the actual, the tribe. Sometimes those, uh, it really depends um, on what type of a drum it is, but sometimes they will uh, gift it to the fire because it's done its purpose and then it's time to bring that in because it's an entire another uh different level of uh awareness that comes in like making new music it really depends on that person the uh connection that that person really has with the drum because that is a um an extension of self so it's another way of bringing your voice out. Uh, so I'll I'll give up on the drum thing here, but it really depends upon the different tribes and what that intent for the drum is. Does that make sense? Yes. Thank you. So does that work for you, Ava? Oh, I'll get that name right. Yeah. Um, I just know, I just don't know how to thank you all. I'm so glad I'm in this space. I really thought I was losing it. And you start ignoring it. I, I thought because there's so much stress right now going on in my life that, um, you know, how all these modern scientists talk about when you're stressed, that you're out of yourself or whatever. But I have this immense, I, I, I haven't had this for many years, but you need to understand that in 2007, I was in coma for three weeks, disabled, and um, magically recovered in 2010. It cost me my marriage, but I ended up with two little kids as a single mom and have been basically fighting in this surreality, I don't want to call this reality. It, sorry, I, I don't like this reality where you have to pay the bills, where you have to show up for work, where you have to obey. And I'm a teacher and education is not what it was like 20 years ago. And with this digital revolution and the pandemic, whatever, etc., you are being isolated and being um, on the verge of a very serious illness, which could have been prevented. Thank you, modern medicine. I think I become ill each time I lose touch with my inner self. Because the moment I become ill, I do find that inner self and I do open up. And I I remember my mom, like again, they used to drag me from mosque to mosque thinking that I was, you know, possessed in my culture, not, not my, my parents' culture, every entity that is not visible in the three-dimensional reality is a curse. So you need to be careful. They even, you know, wrote me texts from the Quran and put it on my neck. I remember just throwing it out of the window because 
these were these were these were not you know entities that I could see, but it was a feeling that I was not weird, that I was not stupid, or at least they they showed me the purpose. Don't get distracted. You know, just pay the bill. Yeah, whatever. That's fine. Everything will... T- I lost that. But the the chanting, that's new. And I feel embarrassed. But thank you, Paul. I do feel, you know, safe and comfortable enough to share it with you guys because I know you won't put me in, you know, put me the etiquette of silly or crazy or whatever. I have double masters, can you believe? But I miss, I miss whatever it is that I'm hearing. It sounds familiar, but I don't know where it is coming from. To an animal, it's satanic or whatever. And there's the question, is it evil or is it is it me? What is it? It's okay, I haven't disappeared. I'm just trying to figure out how to get a tweet back in. Um, Imaginal, what's your thoughts? I don't think there is. I think we're touching into things that we've touched in in slightly different ways um, previously. In I'm so sorry if I have to no. make you repeat stuff. I'm so sorry. No. I, 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 it, um, this is uh, the point that I want to make. That over the years that I was receiving these, you know, downloads and and communications, those uh, there's a couple people that I'm close to that have um, listened to these messages over the years as well. They noticed that things were very repetitive. Uh, they will try to take a different angle. You know, it's like let's look at it from this viewpoint. Now let's look at it um, framed this way. Um, it's going to be repetitive. So there, I am not complaining about that or calling, you know, making that an issue. Um, we can come back to this as many times as we need to. All I want to do is remind you again that you do have the ability to shift and change this. And this is, I want to point out the level of um, programming in all of us that we forget moment by moment it's like we'll go oh i get it oh my god this is amazing and and then we just go oh this is now everything's going to be fine everything's going to be great life is wonderful and then you then you forget and you slip back out of it and again we just simply recognize oh not without not with a value judgment but just oh I I forgot again. Oops. And now I choose to be present and to speak my truth and to say what is actually happening. What am I feeling right now in this moment? That generates the resonance that reconnects you to your, um, you know, words are, uh, I have trouble with this part, you know, it, whatever you like to call it, guidance, um, source. I don't use the term God, um, or I, I refrain from that because I feel that we were given a version of source here. That we were given um, versions of of what is actual, and we settled for that because that's how we were programmed. To, we were directed to that. Um, there is, um, and I think the Gnostics call this the God above God. Um, there is, and I, I refer to it as the original source. So, okay, I was going to say about the demiurge because the demiurge was making the imperfection, imperfective yeah. universe, and then you got the one above that, which is meant to be the one that's got perfection. Yeah, and and it's great that you brought that in because I don't know these things. I'm I'm a naive. I, I I'm completely naive. I was born into this world, and I'm just like. What the hell is going on in this place? Right from very early years, it was upside down, wrong, backwards. Um, if you tell the truth, you get in trouble. 
you know, right away, it's, um, you know, they tell, they tell you to be honest, but then when you're actually honest, right, I see a lot of the empaths and the intuitives here um, chiming in. Um, when you do tell the truth and you, you get in a lot of trouble because you're saying things out loud <laughs> that most people want to keep hidden. So then you start to learn oh, we have to hide who we really are here in order to fit in, in order to get a job, in order to get a partner, in order to get anything, money. We have to be something other than who we actually are. So it's always about finding out, rediscovering who we actually are. And um, I'm just, and I will keep reminding people that's what I do. I just, because that's what the beings did for me over all these years, is they remind me, they reoriented me to the truth of who I am, and that I'm being asked to share this with you as they did with me. But unless we're open to this, and we, we, we want to open to our resonant capacities within our, our physiology, um, unless we choose to move into that inner landscape now, and engage with it directly, um, we, we will be choosing to um, stay with, you know, what Eifer was calling um, normal, you know, this and all the roles that we're playing in this normal world. Um, once you're transformed, you, keep, you will keep having transformative experiences the more that you consciously engage with it. Um, and at a certain point, you'll just notice, oh, my God, I'm not a victim anymore. I don't even recognize that world as something real. I know what's real. It has a vibration that tells me it's real. And, and it guides me now. And so this is what is meant by, um, by uh, turning within, you know, that's been such a strange thing to a lot of people. What do you mean? But they'll, they'll, they'll post it on Facebook and all the social media sites. Yes, we just need to go in. We need to do this. We need to do that. Then do it. The beings always said, then do it. Why aren't you doing it? Why are you just talking about it? Because there's that, that's the glitch. That's the chasm, you know, between this play acting in this you know on this big theater with all these <laughs> politicians I, I laugh about the political theater here um i mean it's just it's so insane by the way i used to be politician oh seriously okay yes well, that's for four years experience. a member of parliament so i served the dutch government so i know how politics works yeah, yeah. thank you for your service <laughs> Just a quick one for you. In the above links, I've now put um, the liminal lady, which is called Beck, and also the Hum Project and the connection to it. And also, again, it's for artisanal and also for yourselves, the ones that hear the sounds. So this is something which I think is fascinating because what well, it just is that if you can hear sounds that other people can't hear, and even if it's just, say, some kind of cosmic radiation that's making a particular sound and you're standing in that spot or it's the quartz frequency being um, oh which one uh, is it which one is it I can't find it I can't see it it's the last one on the left so the last one like on the on the left which means I go left and the ones that said supplies no I think it's titled the hum it should be called the, the hum one? yeah yeah, yeah. At, these, at lady liminal the hum I can't see it. It's the oh. very, the very uh, first Maybe one now. Don't close the app, but close the screen down on the top left hand of the little arrow to contract it, and then make it expand again. Sometimes that refreshes the okay. different shared information that comes in. I've also included you on a tweet with your name actually in it, so okay, that awesome. will also work as well. Uh, I thought I was the only one. Thank you, Paul. And thank you, Imaginal. By the way, what's your name, Imaginal, so I can just, you know, refer to you with your name? What's Eileen. 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 Eileen, I love you so much. Thank you very much. You got a fan. Paul, you too. <laughs> we are we are discovering each other, helping each other. <laughs> we see it was synchronicity tonight for me to actually find you in direct messaging and just throw it to you and say, look, 
um, because obviously we've had a few in between time since the last time we spoke. So it must have needed to be done. Um, I was distracted by the unnatural reality. Sorry, Paul. Uh, sorry, Ashley had her hand up for a while. I'm not sure if you still wanted to have a say, Ashley. It's okay. I'm actually um, in the process of baking brownies for my daughter. <laughs> she uh, have you brought every, everyone one here? Because obviously if you come to the room with food, share with everyone. You know what it happens at school. I will pass it through the phone like we were talking about doing yesterday. <laughs> Definitely. Ashley found us by synchronicity yesterday and she is going to be right in there for good old head injuries and talking about conversations along those lines. And she found it amazing about the type of areas that we discuss. Yes. And what you were saying earlier about being taught um, to be truthful and then turned around and when you are truthful, having to be told that you have to lie about that, about who you are. I was telling them the other day about um, my very first deja vu, as my mother called it, um, whenever I more or less stopped my sister from getting bit by a snake. Um, I I swore that she got bit by a snake. We ran inside, uh, got my parents. Dad went outside and moved the rock. There, there was a snake under that rock, but my sister wasn't bit. I, I more or less stopped it before it happened. My mom explained to me about deja vu, and after she got done explaining that and telling me that, I'm probably going to be getting that a lot more often, and um, that I have to start paying attention to timing and all that other stuff. She she really um, told me about what visions are like um, for her, and then I was told not to tell anybody whenever I have these deja vus, visions, whatever. Um, because I would get called crazy and growing up, you know, after we had that conversation, I seen it a lot more. My mom would try to, you know, she would have a dream or a deja vu and she would like be worried, um, and call whoever she is, um, thinking that this dream or vision is for that they need to be warned, you know, if she feels like it's that strong enough and she'll make sure that they're okay, you know, and it I guess it weirded some of my family members or friends, uh, family friends out or whatever. So they, I would grow up seeing them call her crazy and it hurt because I'm this person too. And I, I see things before they happen sometimes. And so I kept mine down, um, kept mine a secret. Uh, I didn't talk about it to a lot of people. I actually had a imaginary friend that I talked to a lot. Her name was Alicia. <laughs> and she's the one that I told everything to. Um, because I couldn't tell anybody else. And then as I get older and older, um, trying to explain how I know things, it, it had become difficult. And then my sister had ended up with Chiari malformation. And she had to get brain surgery done. Um, to get the brain stem uh, cauterized off. Um, when she woke from this surgery that she had, she kept having dreams of this woman saying to remember, to remember. And as she went through this journey, trying to remember what she is supposed to be remembering, she realizes she has the same gift as me and my mom. And then she starts doing tarot readings and all of that other stuff and got me back into who I was supposed to be, you know. Because I was told at one point that I need to hide it. And as me and my sister are getting more and more into this and remembering who we are and learning about our ancestry, actually, my sister had found out that we come from a long line of witches uh, doing her ancestry thing. Um, we, uh, we start realizing there's more people out there like us. And uh, hearing you say that... <laughs> made me feel like I got goosebumps all over my body whenever you said that. You have to you get told that you're supposed to tell the truth and then get told to lie because you get called crazy and there's more people out there like us. <laughs> Imaginal, could you tell her about the three horses? <laughs> uh, yes. Um, first of all, Ashley, thank you so much for sharing that. Um, I do have 
uh, something that I'd like to share in response to that. But um, Paul's wanting me to talk about my three imaginary horses <laughs> that used to follow me around everywhere when I was a child. Um, they were my um, guides. You know, I, I can see that very clearly right now. But um, at the time, I was given permission, you know, because I was a child and everybody you know, would say, oh, isn't that cute? And she has three horses that follow her everywhere. Oh, that's adorable. And then at a certain point, it is not adorable anymore. And, and we are uh, corrected. Uh, we are told, uh, you must now fit in to this. You are too old now to play. You are too old to have an imagination. Um, you need to uh, come in alignment just like we did. But Ashley, one of the things that I... I wanted to say um, is I, I want to always honor our, our ancestors, um, even our mothers and grandmothers um, who did the best they could uh, under the circumstances, right? Even I uh, knew that um, I needed to stay quiet uh, because um, I'm, I'm older, I'm 60 years old. And so this has been a very long journey for me. And, I, but I also want to say that we have just crossed into a time where we must be truthful. We must speak out loud about who we are and what we are perceiving, what we are transforming into. Because we do not, in actuality, what these, this intelligence has said is you're not, you don't live in that world anymore. It's, it's actually over. And what's perpetuating it is our agreement that it's still real, right? So that's why the choosing time is so important. Um, oh, shoot. I have a notification on my phone that it's going to die. Um, that's why I plug these things in. Always no, these conversations go for <laughs> Sir, dear sir, it was at 100% when we started. But I, but it, I, but I have headphones in yeah, but I have headphones in, so I can't do both, you know? No, no okay. Um, anyway, um, we are in a different time. We came here to change this. We came here to say this far and no farther. Now we come to the truth. And so I don't care. I, I am unfazed by people who call me crazy. <laughs> Absolutely unfazed. It does not trigger me. I just smile. And I go, I remember when I used to see things that way i understand i have compassion right because i i used to talk or speak or or chime in with everybody else you know like oh yeah i'm like you man and everything i'm cool don't look at me i'm normal um, i'll do what you guys do i'll talk like you guys well that's that's done that is over and that's why you many of you in this room and across this globe it is why you are here to speak this truth now. So I support you all, and I want to empower all of you to step into this role now and let people just, they're going to judge you. Trust me, they will judge you. I've been, out, I've been outspoken about these things for uh, um, 18, not while well, I started with my music, um, and that started uh, right after the Kundalini event, and then turning into a, an original artist and performing this music and that whole journey um, to speak, to sing my truth, uh, literally just sing my truth. Um, so um, I'll, I, let me plug in my phone now before it completely dies and I'll, I'll be back. Momentarily. Would you like me to just mumble in between time? Yes, just do your best. Do your best. Allow me to just plug anybody in the room who I think is worth plugging, who I know should be worth plugging very well. It's very nice to see some new people, which is good. And also, obviously, Wild Eyes is just amazing. And if people want to contact us, because we're thinking about doing one about head injuries and how perceptions change, whether good for the bad or other bits and pieces, that would be fantastic. And also, we do have other conversations that are coming up and centered awareness. You want to be part of this, and also you got other things to say, haven't you? Uh, yes. Okay. Um, I wasn't going to say this, but I'm also um, going to have a podcast with another two friends of mine. Uh, we're launching the first podcast on the 14th of January. We're in the process of putting together 
the introduction and the ad for it. So, um, yeah, so that's what I'm doing. What is the name of this podcast? Let's plug this with enthusiasm. It's called the Heart Collective Podcast. And we're Which going social to... media sites can we find you on? Uh, so far, Spotify, YouTube. Uh, we're considering Anchor. Not sure about that yet. But, yeah, so far, Spotify and YouTube. Would you and... like people to review and give comments? Yes, that, that will be an option. Um, <laughs> you love this, don't you, Paul? Putting Ooh. me on the spot. <laughs> Putting the spoon in and stirring. <laughs> I'm trying to be good for you. I'm trying to promote you, but you're just not really oh, no, giving look, that razzmatazz. Come on. I love that you do. And it's great <laughs> that you do. Thank you. Um, yeah, so our podcasts are going to be pretty much about, um, well, we want to help support people who are making a difference in this world. Uh, we're, we're going to be supporting um, music artists as well who sing about, um, you know, who have like a spiritual aspect to their work. So maybe in their lyrics or in their music, where they get their inspiration from, things like that. Um, yeah, so basically we want to help promote people and we're going to be talking about things like spirituality, um, consciousness with past lives. We've already recorded a session with Paranormal Blip. So that's, that, that'll be coming out there, coming on soon as well. Um, and a few other people as well. So, yeah, so really excited about it and uh when as it gets closer we'll we'll uh let you know i'm sure paul will be plugging it because he's really good at doing that no he Um, won't bother because of the excitement (laughs) that she used with her first opening line of my new podcast will be like this and just why you won't bother no i'm very shy about it okay this is the first time i've ever done a podcast so i'm very shy about it um but i think artisans has something to say she has her hand up as well so oh my goodness i am i'm glad you're starting a podcast truly truly that's excellent thank you for doing that um thank i you. would like to yeah hey just i'm out here you know i can no i can't that. hear artisan if she's speaking you can't hear me i can hear her clearly i've got no sound at all ah i hear okay. everything as well Paul? Yeah. It must it's be you, Paul. I can hear I can't hear artisan. Anybody else imaginal? Okay. Wild eyes, somebody tells me. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Uh, imaginal. Yeah. I can, can you hear eyes. me. I can hear Ashley. Can you hear me? I can hear <laughs> you all the time in my head, <laughs> even when I'm not with you. I can, Paul, can you hear me, Paul? Can I can hear you. Paul, can you hear me? Paul. Can- <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Can you hear me? It's just now? artisanal. I can't hear artisanal. Can you hear I've me? I've gone now? deaf. She's talking on a different frequency. This is not good. No. I Can hear anyone... artisan too. Can anyone I... else hear me? Well, yeah. if she asked me a direct question, could you just <laughs> relay it to me? You want me okay. To... I'm a translator, Paul. I can translate. Okay. Don't I, mess with her words like I would mess with good old Melissa's. Okay. Just tell me straight. <laughs> okay. I would I would like to leave um, a couple parting remarks. What's she asking and... you? Because I feel like I'm missing out on a conversation. <laughs> okay. She just said she has a few parting remarks. Paul, if you keep talking while she's talking, we won't be able to hear her either. I don't know she's talking, do I? That's the oh. problem. <laughs> <laughs> okay, just stay quiet and let uh, we'll let her talk and then we'll relay it to you. That's a hard job for me. <laughs> okay. Okay. Here is a, I, a beautiful phrase and that I just, I hold very dear to my heart. And it is, I am in this world, but not of it. We can always either A, Take action or be reactive. So you can always react to something or take action. Those are my two favorite things that I hold directly to my heart. And if someone could relay this to Paul, thank him so very much for allowing me to have a presence here for a very short time. Um, I will be leaving, and I just have to say thank you, ladies. Thank you, 
all the speakers and all the gentlemen and all the listeners, thank you so very much. It's been an honor to share this space and this energy with you, but I must, I must leave. Thank you so thank, much. Artisan. Thank you very much. That was very nice. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you for being a part of this space as well. I got no clue what happened. I feel rejected and put in the sin bin. Please, somebody tell me. Okay. Well, did you, did, did you to... enjoy seeing all the um, the emojis going off and you had no <laughs> idea what was being said? <laughs> People talk about you when you can't hear them. That's the problem. <laughs> well, the first part of what Artisan shared was um, something that uh, has helped her a lot and helps her feel uh, centered and aligned is, is the... Um, you know, we're, we're in, we're in this world, but not of it. And I, I very much have related to that phrase as well. And there's a choice that we can be, um, uh, reactionary or, um, action oriented. I think, did I say that correctly? Yes. Yeah, we can either. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Um, and so thank you for, for that wisdom artisan and thank you for all that you have contributed today it was just a joy and an honor to meet you oh thank you we must speak more often hopefully that i will be able to hear you yes <laughs> now yes. if you respond i won't know until somebody else tells me <laughs> okay thank you so much everyone it's been and that's why we use enough. the laughing face because the host normally has to deal with technical issues she's saying thank you very much like noticing my hand, Paul. I notice your hand. It's gone down now. It's just I was trying to find out what was happening before I ignored somebody else. <laughs> you can I say was next. Wondering, I was wondering, Eileen, uh, there's also a question to you, but all the other members as well. Are there any teachers here? And how do you integrate this knowledge that we have right now in this space in your teaching or would you or do you decide not to talk about it? I am a teacher, by the way. So, are you talking about teaching in like in this kind of work, or teaching in a in a public school and having this knowledge about withholding the information? So, I like to when I'm teaching, it's forty percent of what I need to teach, right? It's the curriculum. You need to teach this, et cetera. That's going to be the exam. But 60%, I always try to get in in a conversation. And especially during my uh, time as a politician, I was like, oh my God, I have all these votes. So I have probably been given this status to do something. You know, there's this extra terrestrial power that has put me here that is really what i thought so i went what out age and group are you trying to pitch to ah uh, that's it i haven't talked because five to... year olds is gonna be a bit difficult to no like teenagers but that was like 10 years ago i only teach at university uh currently but due to my illness i stopped altogether right now but um when i was teaching teenagers like 14 15 year olds who are very open and who are very curious especially because of my name and you know my appearance it doesn't look dutch so where do you come from what is your religion etc and i never talk about what i believe what i read what i think is right it's always neutral because i'm a teacher you know you have to evolve and get to know yourself as an individual but I have always uh, had this immense desire to show the students that there is so much more than, you know, a diploma or this materialist. So what are you going to do? University, then what? Get a girlfriend, get down what? Get a credit card, then what? Get in debt, get down what? Buy a house, then what? Have a child and become miserable and so <laughs> to break basically this this cycle i usually try to get so my question that... my question is are there any teachers and how do you how do you cope with this um i'm always scared I... of political 
suppression. I don't want you to be misunderstood, okay? Because <laughs> if this gets played back left next, you have get a child, get miserable. It could be you have a child and then the rest of life makes you miserable. Yeah. Um, may I respond, Pfeiffer? Yes, please, Eileen, do. And your greatest power <clears throat> and abilities and gifts uh, shine through your presence. Your presence when you're embodying this wisdom, your presence is what ignites those around you. That it doesn't, a lot of this doesn't even have to be put into words. It's by watching you, being around you. I, can I interrupt you? I'm sorry. Sure. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm shaking right now. Um, from the age of eight and onwards, I always tried searching and finding that one particular skill that I had and no one else had and which I found later when I was in my 20s and I was teaching and I um, I am a presence I am a positive presence that's the feedback I always get back to help our research and understanding leave perceptions today's podcast reviews subscribe to the podcast along with the other social media accounts and share Come and join our live events. That way we can get together and have thoughtful discussions along with advancing our understanding of concepts as we go along.